Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, as you can see I haven't quite arrived at the Ritz yet. I'm on my way and before I get there I've just got to finish off doing my makeup. So today it's all about how to do a very simple quick um, eye makeup um, if you want your eyes to look better. Uh, so I've done this one, I'm going to do that one and uh, I'll show you how. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about what I call hairy horrors which is facial hair. Um, I've had some suggestions from our lovely uh, super troopers um, and some ideas for products which I'm going to suggest to you and I thought I'd show you a little bit how I go about uh, taming my eyebrows which are really quite challenging and difficult at times. So um, do have a look and maybe uh, if you want to replay the video um, you can do it with me uh, by stopping and starting and just following the procedure. So um, I think most of you know that I started Look Fabulous Forever when I was 65, I'm now 72 and I did it because I was really frustrated with the products that uh, were in the shops. Um, I felt that they were formulated for younger faces, younger skins and um, they didn't suit me very well. Uh, so I decided to create my own range and uh, happily it's uh, been incredibly uh, successful and popular with our brilliant customers. So I'm going to start with this product which is uh, our Smooth Out Eye Prime, that's it. Now I'm going to do this because I'm not going to bother with anything other than this. So I'm just going to use this because you can see it's a creamy texture and it's also a creamy colour. I'm going to use this on its own and I'm not going to bother with any eyeshadow on my lid. I'm just going to apply that. And it's, it's really to cut down on time and faff if you like. Uh, because that's the, the thing I get from quite a lot of people, although you've got lots of time now, so maybe you, you do want to take the trouble, and actually this would be a great opportunity this time to, uh, to, to experiment with some uh, different techniques in terms of eye makeup. I, um, I, I've got, there are lots and lots of videos on the, on the website for you to follow, um, so have a look, you know, I, I give you glamorous evening looks, smoky eye looks, all that kind of thing, usually done on myself, uh, so have a look and see if you'd like to, to look at those. So this is taupe. Now I'm going to choose taupe because it's just one of those colours that suits absolutely everybody. Regardless of colour tone, regardless of the colour of your hair or anything like that, it's just one of those brilliant colours that should be in everybody's eye makeup bag. Now the way that I'm going to use this is to add some shaping. So if you look on this eye, I've used this here and here just to make my eyes look bigger and a better shape. So here we go. So this is where I'm going to put it and I'm using this brush which is our brush number seven. So you just want like a, a quite a stubby soft brush and it's very simple what you do. Just, just there, that's where you're putting it, above the eyelid. Um, I'm just going to check in my mirror there. Do you know what? I think that's enough. How long did that take me? Seconds. And now I'm just going to blend it with another of those brushes. So this is my blending brush, which I keep uh, for that. It, I don't put product onto this brush. I just literally use it for blending. So there we go. That's it. Next thing I'm going to do is I think it's really, really important to add some definition along your lash line. Um, older eyelashes are often quite sparse, so you know how can you overcome that? Well, it's quite challenging, it's quite difficult. But one way is to push some of this, I'm using Midnight Blue for this, let me show you that. To push this using my little wedge brush into the base of my eyelashes. Again, it's quite a simple procedure, so I'm going to protect that because the little bits of filament will actually go down on to my cheeks. Filaments by, I don't mean filaments, I mean, you know, the bits of the um, eyeshadow. Now, it's quite tricky for me to do this because I'm doing this into a computer screen, which is filming me. I'm not doing it into a mirror, so I've not got a very good view of what I'm doing, so I'm almost doing this by instinct. If you haven't got very good eyesight, but you're good at putting your makeup on, I think quite a lot of it is done by instinct. And then you can check it when you've got your glasses on. We've got, uh, we've got a video about how to put eye makeup on 
when you wear glasses, so that might help you. Okay, so that, that's pretty simple. Just push it down into the roots of your um, eyelash. Can you see how instantly that makes a difference and just makes my eyes look better? And I'm just going to, I've got a mirror beside me, I'm just going to do the underneath bit as well. I'm just going to rub that along that underneath bit and pull it out slightly at the edge, like that. So this is a nice dark colour. So I would say that this is a mid-tone colour, not too dark, but this is the dark, some of the darkest colours that we have which are chocolate, which is a lovely deep brown, forest, which is a lovely deep green, aubergine, which would be good today because I'm wearing a purple top, um, and midnight blue. There are dark colours. We've got a couple of uh, nice, what I would call these mid-tone colours. So that's bluebell and that's teal green. Both of those are lovely. That would be lovely if you were uh, warm toned and that's lovely if you're cool toned. All of these terms are explained on the website by the way under choosing colours. Now to finish off, so that really hasn't taken me long and hopefully those eyes now are fairly balanced, I'm just going to finish with mascara. If you don't do anything else, just put some mascara on. Simple. Uh, even that little bit of definition at your lashes can make a huge difference. So, you know, wiggle, wiggle up, wiggle, wiggle up, usual procedure. I often find now when I put mascara on that I make a little bit of a mess with it. Uh, I think it's just to do with, I don't know what's to do with that. <laughs> Maybe I always made a mess with my mascara. But can you see how I've just made that quite messy at the bottom? Don't worry about that. Just don't worry about it at all at the moment. So there you go, one coat of mascara. I could put another coat on, but I'm not, I am going to the Ritz, but um, I would I would uh, do that if I, if I was going out, but one coat will do. And now I'm going to just check in my mirror and just get rid of those, uh, any little speckles that have um, come down underneath with a Q-tip or cotton bud. There we go. That's it. End of. How long did that take me? Not very long. And had I not been chatting, uh, it would have taken me a lot less time. So now to the brows. Now what do you do if you've got straggly or difficult brows? Now, I've done this brow. Hopefully you think that looks better than this one. It's got a bit more definition to it. So what I do with brows, I'll get really close so that you can have a look. Um, I will brush them first. So I'm using this spoolie brush, which is our brush six. And actually, if I push the brows in that direction, you'll see that I'm sure like you, my brows are A, very sparse, B, can be quite spiky. I've got white hairs in there, and I've also got some that are shaped like hockey sticks. Um, I, don't, I try not to pluck too many of them out, just because I want to have a little bit of brow hair left. But I'm fairly ruthless plucking out this area here keeping this free because that brow bone, I put a little bit of highlighter on that, that brow bone is great for um, helping the shape of your eye. So I've brushed them back in place and we've got this ingenious uh, brow shape which is now in colour grey which is what I'm now using. We do it in, in a, a, a darkish brown if you've got quite good strong coloured eye brows and that's what it looks like on the back of my hand and all I do with this and again forgive me if I'm you see I can't even see that I'm touching myself there you go it's quite hard for me to do this but I'm going to do my best and what you're doing light feathery strokes and again don't panic if it looks a bit odd because you can correct it afterwards really easily stroking it along my brows like that my brows are quite short, so I was making them a bit longer. I think that's enough. How long did that take? 30 seconds. And back to the uh, spoolie brush. And just what you do with the spoolie brush now is just make sure that there's no hard bits. And uh, is that balanced? Let me look in my mirror. No, I think this one's a bit darker. So let me just, just brush it down a little bit. Take some of that colour out. There we go. I think that will do. Um, let me put some lipstick on. I'm going to, where's my lipstick? I'm going to put on um, cherry red today. I, I feel the need to brighten myself up. I quite like dark lipsticks and bright lipsticks. So uh, lovely cherry red. There it is. Uh, this isn't particularly true on this screen. Cherry red is like a, is like a lovely, it really is the colour of cherries. So I've 
I've already put some uh, lip primer on to make sure it doesn't feather the lines around my eye. Yeah, I think that will do. Am I really nearly ready for the Ritz? And here are my uh, earrings for today. I got these from Sahara, you know, that shop that sells um, lovely clothes. Uh, I got I got uh, these there. I've got quite a few of their earrings, actually. Um, I think they do sell them online. Have a look. Um, no lipstick on my teeth. So I'm good to go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I said I would talk about hairy horrors. Um, if you can't get to the salon and you're worried about uh, sprouting hairs all over the place, I managed to keep mine under control. You just need a really big magnifying mirror. Um, I get them here. I get longish hairs here. I get little black ones here. Weird, horrible. I get them on my chin. I can feel them. I get them on a, a mole that I've got there. And of course I get them um, on my, as you would expect, on my brow. So what I do is I use a really strong magnifying mirror times 10. And I just go in there and my goodness me, what does that expose? And I just pluck them out. Don't worry, I don't think you should worry about plucking um, hairs out of your face uh, like that. They're not gonna, you know, you, you don't pluck one in 10 grows, grows in its place. It's not like that, it doesn't work like that. In fact, you're weakening the follicle every time you pull it out. So just, just trim like that. And I'm going to leave some recommendate, I've, I've had some recommendations for something called Flawless from a couple of women, that, that's what they use. It's a little mini shaver specific for the face. Obviously good old depilatory cream which you put on and leave and uh, and then wipe it off and Veet wax strips have also been recommended apparently you can get those in Sainsbury's. Um, I'm sure you can get all of those things online as well without a problem. So um, I, I do hope that was helpful. Um, you might want to start a thread on this on um, Super Troopers to, uh, to tell each other what you do and how you're approaching this because nothing is worse I think than well, emerging from this, and we keep talking about emerging from it with um, with a whole load of uh, hair sprouting out of your face. And I tell you what, if you do have hair sprouting out of your face, then you're not alone. I think everybody does. And uh, it's just a question of keeping it under some level of control. Um, just a couple of things uh, to finish. One is uh, I've had three or four really poignant comments from women who have lost their husbands quite recently. One had lo actually lost him this week and she said, I've lost my soulmate. So my heart absolutely goes out to you. I, I think we can all understand how, how really hard that must be. So my, um, my shout out here is for a brilliant group called the Jolly Dollies. Now they are women who are widowed they usually meet for real, but I'm sure they'll have some online things going on. So you might like to look at their website and see if there's any help there for you uh, and reach out. Um, the other thing is uh, I, I always like to finish on something positive that's going on. So a couple of things. One last night, the clapping. Did you go outside? I was really unsure that that would work. I was on the phone to a friend in Weatherby in Yorkshire and she said, oh, I'm going to go out and do the clapping. And I said, yeah, but you're in, you're in, you know, Weatherby in a, in a small cul-de-sac. I'm sure everybody would be out there. This is London, you know. Anyway, at my door, I was absolutely staggered at the noise and the clapping and the cheering. And it was like every street around me was echoing to the sound. It was brilliant. And I just think it's just such a sign of how differently we're all behaving right now. And I also want to send all that support that we were giving last night to those doctors and nurses who are literally going to save our lives. And uh, my second uh, high note to end is uh, Gareth Malone, who uh, was on television yesterday. He's going to do a sing-along, a live one, at 530 every day on his YouTube channel, or you can reach him via uh, his Facebook page. So I think in, in, you go onto YouTube, you just put Gareth Malone in there, and it will come up at 5.30. I think I've given you the right time. I'm pretty sure it's 5.30, okay? And uh, finally, um, I'm not gonna see you tomorrow. Um, I'm not gonna see you on Sunday, although the, the blog will come um, as usual, but um, I will be thinking about you, and I hope that you're, uh, that you're happily getting on with your weekend. I've decided to make a date to go to the cinema tomorrow afternoon. I often do that on a Saturday, and I'm gonna go and see The Truth with um, Juliette Binoche and Catherine Deneuve. It's on Curzon Home Cinema. 
So I thought I'd do it, you know, just as if I was going to the cinema. I'll, I'll go at three o'clock, sit down and uh, watch it. And do you know what? Those two women, wouldn't it be brilliant if they joined us at the Ritz? Can you imagine having Catherine Deneuve and Juliette Binoche there looking unbelievably French and elegant, like all of us? Uh, mais oui, bien sûr. Okay, that's me. Done. Have an absolutely great weekend and I really do look forward to seeing you on Monday at four o'clock for Tea Time at the Ritz with Tricia. See you then. Bye-bye.